Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you some no fail and no fuss Easter recipes. These are just the things that I contributed to our family's Easter dinner this year. The first dish that I'm going to show you is deviled eggs. This is very simple. I don't know why I was intimidated for years by making deviled eggs. The first thing you have to do, of course, is to hard boil your eggs. I have tried a lot of different techniques to hard boiling, and the best thing I found, I just put a dozen eggs in a big pot of water, put it on the stove, heat it to a rolling boil. As soon as that water starts boiling, put a lid on it, leave it on the stove eye, but turn the heat off. Set a timer for 20 minutes, and then walk away and don't touch them till time's up. Then come and run them under some cold water two or three times, rinsing them off and cooling them down. I don't do an ice bath or anything like that. And this has been the best way that I have found that they peel a little bit easier too. So I just tap mine on each end to kind of break the shell apart and then just start peeling away. Eventually, you'll get them all done. That's probably the most um, aggravating part or the hardest part of making the deviled eggs is peeling them. Once you get them all peeled and rinsed off, I dry mine real good and then cut them long ways. And you can see that 20 minutes sitting in that hot water cooks them just perfect. Then you take the yellow part out of the little white cup and put that in a separate bowl and set all your little white cups over to the side. When you get all your egg yolks in there, you're just going to take a fork and start mashing them up. You don't want them to be completely smushed, but you're just going to start getting them mixed up in preparation to putting your other ingredients in them. And these are approximations I'm going to give you. Um, I don't really measure this out, but you want to start with less because you can always add more. I use about a tablespoon of just yellow mustard, about a third cup of mayonnaise, and a big heaping tablespoon of sweet pickle relish, and mix all that together into the egg. Once you get that mixed up pretty good, I like to come back and I just take one little cap full of apple cider vinegar. That just brings it all together and gives it the best taste. Now when I'm just making these on a weeknight at home for my family, I just take the spoon and fill my little cups right up. But I decided I'd go to an old trick I've used before where you just take a Ziploc bag and pipe the yellow part of your egg back into the cup. So you just fill up a baggie full of all your yellow mixture and you'll kind of squeeze it down to one end. You're just going to snip the corner of the baggie off enough that you can pipe your egg mixture out of that corner. And you'll see real quick, I didn't cut my hole big enough, so i got to go back and cut it just a little bit bigger. And I'm no expert, I'm not a great decorator, and um, I figured out real quick, I remembered why I didn't do my eggs like this anymore. It's because I really don't like how it looks. But that's what cooking is. It's just trial and error, finding what you like and what you don't like, 
And if you do mess it up, it's not a big deal. It's one time and you learn from it. So yeah, about right here, I'm looking at those eggs thinking, I really don't like how this looks. But I just went ahead and got all my yellow in them. That's not a big deal because I thought I'll just take a spoon and go back over these eggs and kind of smooth them out like I like whenever I fill them up with the spoon. So that's what I did here. I just kind of like to rough them up a little bit. I don't like it where it looks like a little ice cream, soft serve ice cream cone or something on there. I like mine to look more like rustic. So I like the way they look then. And then of course you just top them with paprika. Makes them pretty. Give them a little bit of color. And I always prep these the day before if I have to make like a whole dozen of them. And then is it even Easter if you don't pull out your grandma's Fire King Devil Day plate? The next thing I'm going to show you is broccoli casserole. This is the quickest, easiest side. I like to use frozen chopped broccoli because I like the little pieces. I don't like big chunks of broccoli or big pieces of stem in my casserole. I use two 12 ounce bags of chopped broccoli. You'll need some chopped onion, a cup of mayonnaise, one can of cream of mushroom soup, one egg, eight ounces of cheddar cheese or if you have shredded Velveeta salt and pepper you need a sleeve of Ritz crackers and about a half a stick of butter for your topping so the first thing I do is just cook the broccoli according to the directions if you have a steamable bag that works great these little bags like this just really heat up better on the stove I just throw them in a big pot and pour a little bit of water over them and then I'll just bring it up to a good boil stir it around make sure it's all getting some water on it and a little bit of heat to it and then I'll just cut it off and leave it there for a little bit let it get softened it doesn't have to be cooked all the way through so while that's sitting there I'm gonna mix the rest of the ingredients up in a large bowl take that one cup of mayonnaise, your can of cream and mushroom soup, and you'll notice I'm using frozen diced onions. I do that in a lot of my casseroles. It just makes things so much easier, especially if you're prepping three or four dishes. But that's about half of what you would get out of an onion. You're going to put salt and pepper and then one egg to use as your binder. Mix all that up together, then add in that eight ounce bag of shredded cheese. You drain your broccoli off and get as much water out of it as you can. Then you just mix it in to this mixture. And that's how it looks. It all comes together yummy. You get a greased 9 by 13 pan or whatever size casserole dish you like. Spread it all out in there. Now again, this is something that I like to prep the day before. So I'm just going to cover this and put it in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, I'll bring it out and bake it up. I don't put the topping on if I'm making it the day before. I wait until right before I bake it. So that topping is just a sleeve of Ritz crackers. Depending on the shape of your dish, you may need more than a sleeve, but I have found this little dish that I used in, in today's video, a sleeve works just fine on it. Just crumble them up and then You'll spread them all across the top of that casserole, melt down about half a stick of butter, and you just pour that over the top of it. 
You don't need any more than a half a stick of butter. This recipe is very rich, but it's very tasty. And it's got all the mayonnaise and the cream of mushroom. So you really don't need a lot of extra. You just want to try to get a little butter pretty much scattered across those cracker crumbs. And this will bake in my oven at 350. It takes 45 minutes. It may take a little longer for yours, especially if it's a thick casserole dish, but it comes out so brown and bubbly. And then those are the rolls I made. I really didn't make those. That's just frozen roll dough. I highly suggest you get a bag of that. It comes frozen in little balls and you just set it out on top of a warm oven and let it thaw and they rise and bake. The next recipe we simply call Maddie's favorite lemon dessert. And you need two small boxes of lemon instant pudding, three cups of milk, an eight ounce container of Cool Whip, and graham crackers. First you prepare the filling. Put in both of your little boxes of instant lemon pudding. You're gonna add in your three cups of milk and get that whisk together really good. You don't even have to pull out a hand mixer for this. Once you get all that mixed in together, you're gonna take your Cool Whip and you need to make sure that it's thawed out for this. And you're just gonna fold it into this pudding mixture. And it makes a light, fluffy filling for this dessert. It's almost gonna have a lasagna look whenever you cut it. So the noodles would be <laughs> represented by these graham crackers. You just grease like a nine by 13 size pan and spread graham crackers all along the bottom of it. And greasing it just helps you lift this up from the bottom without sticking a little bit better. And this does not have to be precise. I struggle with this every time I make it because I like things to just look and be perfect. But it doesn't have to be. It's gonna taste great and once everything is together, it looks perfect. Take about half of your pudding mixture and spread it across this first layer of graham crackers. Then you're gonna come back in with another layer of graham crackers and repeat this process with the graham crackers and the second half of your pudding mixture. I don't even remember where I got this recipe. Maybe from Jello pudding, like something in a magazine. But we have enjoyed this recipe so much. It's a lot similar to one I make that's like a chocolate eclair cake. So once you get the rest of your pudding mixture on, you layer another layer, which is the final layer of graham crackers. Now, do as I say and not as I do because I start overthinking this here. By the time you get to the top, things are gonna spread out a little bit different than they did in the bottom layers. And I do this every time. I start breaking those graham crackers up, trying to make them fit, and then I'll have jagged edges and an awful mess, and I do it every time. Here I am, getting all my little cracks filled in. Finally, just gave up and said, good enough is good enough. So here's the icing. For the icing, 
you'll need one stick of melted butter, two tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of milk, and you start with one cup of powdered sugar in your bowl and then you'll add in another, so a total of two cups. I like to start with the butter and just begin mixing into that powdered sugar so I don't get too many clumps. Then add in your milk and your lemon juice. And then you want to start mixing in that last cup of powdered sugar. This makes a beautiful glaze. It sets up perfectly and I always put just a little bit extra lemon in mine because I like that little extra tangy flavor. That feeling is so soft and, and this little bit of extra tartness on the top just sends it over the top. So here I am, I've poured it all over and I'm spreading it out and you can see by the time this sets up and dries, you don't even notice where the graham crackers are. Once you get this covered, you're going to put it in the freezer for about four hours. And then, again, I prepped this the day before, so I let mine sit in the freezer overnight. And then the next day, I pulled it out and put it in the fridge. And I hope that you'll take some of these recipes and try them and make them your own. I used to be very intimidated when I first got married. I didn't have a lot of experience cooking. And there's such a learning curve. And I just want to encourage you to not be afraid to try something. Ask somebody how they made something. It's not that intimidating. And if you make a mistake, it's going to be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to have a good time and enjoy feeding yourself and your family. Feel it full of love. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a great Easter and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.